to this round table to the International Federation of Agriculture Producers. And I'd like to say in the context of the multiple crises um, of energy, climate change, food and uh, the financial crisis, there's a need for a new approach to face new challenges. The volatility of coal prices in 2008 should be looked as a wake-up call and an early warning sign to the world of what we are likely to face. The multifaceted world crisis has shown that food security is not a local issue, it's systemic and a global crisis. The issue is not to hold views for water as a separate entity, another one for energy and yet another one for poverty and food security. The bottom line is to think out of the water box and to think of water security in an integrated manner which encompasses a liberty to food, energy, economic growth and human security. Therefore, there's a need to step back and look at the water issue from a larger perspective in order to face these challenges. There's a need for a better understanding of the linkages. Farmers are the first victims <coughs> of water-related problems in terms of quality and quantity. And farmers need to use sustainable farming practices to produce more crops and more income per drop. If you look at the statistics of water usage, they're dismally poor. Sub-Saharan Africa uses 5% of renewable water availability for, for irrigation. Latin America less than 10, North Africa about 50%. Low yields and high food prices plunge millions of farmers in rural communities into poverty and hunger. Therefore, farmers have a huge, huge challenge of producing more food for a growing world population using the same resource base which is increasingly strained in the context of climate vulnerability. We've been called to double food production over the next 25 years to feed an additional 3 billion people by 2050. This indeed in itself is a huge challenge. I'd like to give you a few key recommendations to national governments and main, main policy makers in the international community. It is important for our relative uh, and relevant international organizations not only to confine themselves to gender balance and indigenous people's rights, but also to make it a mandatory requirement to engage with local farmers' organizations as key partners into the formulation and implementation of water and agriculture-related policies and decisions. There should be a link between water management policies and agricultural policies through the creation of a special national budget line for the participation of farmers' organizations. Women in agriculture in particular need to be involved at all levels of decision making. They are mainly responsible for a major part of the food production in many developing countries. There is also a need to promote international river basin cooperation through decentralized and targeted action for each river basin with full recognition of all uses and users and consultation of all sta stakeholders. This, we believe, Chairman, will reduce the tensions between competing users around the globe and help increase efficiency in the use of water resources. To economically develop poorer farmers, the management of water should go beyond technical and economic aspects. It should include social aspects such as communication, raising awareness and participation. Farmers must become full participants in water management and decisions about the prioritization of access to water through consultative frameworks. Farmers should also become members of water associations, something which you talked about. Strengthening of water research and extension services through partnerships between the research and farming communities using appropriate technologies that respect socio-economic and political aspects are needed. Scientists should be able to learn from farmers and the rural population and benefit from their traditional and indigenous knowledge. There's also a need for cooperation between donor agencies and industry for transfer and adaptation of best technologies that can be usable by small-scale farmers. There are several priority measures that should be promoted through water policies to help reduce undernourishment and even could be used towards our messages to the CSD in May 2009. The holistic approach to the issue of water and agriculture, a sort of multifunctionality, 
the solution to increase water security at national, regional and international levels should be looked at taking into account the transboundary nature of water systems using a solidarity approach. Therefore, an integrated approach to water resource management in the context of climate change is critical, with the involvement of farmers as important stakeholders in decision-making processes. There's a need to increase investment in agriculture to help liberate water for agriculture and other sectors. National governments must give priority to investment in water for agriculture and rural development as well as for the protection of water resources in their national budget. They must set clear priorities concerning water usage. A farmer-centered approach as part of the solution for an integrated management of the water resources. Unless we're able to put farmers at the center of water and agriculture related policies, sustainable development will not be achieved. Enabling farmers who are actually the custodians of the environment and have access to land and water resources will encourage them to use more environmentally friendly agricultural practices and hence manage the water resources in a more sustainable manner. Farmers need research for adaptation to climate change at farm level. Adaptation means improving the efficiency of water uses and adopting farming practices and water infrastructure to variations in precipitation including droughts and floods to be able to sustain the millions of livelihoods and future food production. Farmers need support of the research community to develop and use more intensive water harvesting techniques implement and build capacity on water and soil conservation technologies, adopt crops and cropping methods, and there's a need to establish well-functioning data and early warning systems to improve data availability on the impact of climate change on water availability for a sound development of the agriculture sector. The water footprint on agriculture production is not very well known when it comes to climate change. Therefore, Chairman, methodologies for the measurement need to be looked at and developed. The balance between water demand and supply management and the need to tap the potential of water demand in order to increase water use efficiency. The potential of water conservation is huge in terms of increasing water user efficiency. There is a need to deploy efforts to improve the demand side of water using non-conventional sources of water management, desalination, recycling of wastewater, water harvesting, amongst others. Therefore, it is important to work on rationalizing water <coughs> demand through a more responsible use of water by our farmers, while increasing the availability of water resources through increasing the mobilization capacity of the water resources at the same time. There is also in this context a need to look at ways to reduce water losses throughout the food chain between field and fork. 50% of the losses could be reduced in order to increase water use efficiency. Farmers should benefit from fair water pricing policies as incentives for rational water use. Water pricing policies unaccompanied by suitable fair and positive incentives can actually play a key role in achieving rational water use. By modernizing family-run farms and adopting irrigation systems and techniques, the essential elements of fair pricing policies are farmers' payment capacities in relation to the terms of cost re recovery as well as farmers' local socio-economic, cultural and hydrological context. A FOIA policy should also be introduced progressively to allow farmers to adopt and acquire the knowledge of environmental and economic basis of the application of the policy, thus serving as a capacity building tool. Farmers and the International Federation of Agricultural Producers of the World expect that we have the resolve to move beyond the boardroom and bureaucracy with a positive proactive strategy in water where the word, words agriculture and farmers will be considered as equal partners. I thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. We